Try strike comp. Yeah, we've been seeing them do this, and it looks like they're going to keep it going. We're in loser semis here with the best of three. Just the last one, then we go back to best of fives, and we're seeing the standard comps, but actually not the heavy spine. We're going to be going to ball point here. I'm kind of surprised. Chara, Chara, there is no crab tank in this game. Yeah, I think... Is this Splatoon 3? Did we, are we casting the wrong game? I, I thought this map was Splatoon 3 exclusive, but... No, there's a Kraken. No. This is the first game. Oh, okay, okay. There we go, there we go. Yeah, see, that 96, you know, we know the one. That's, that's like the meta, right? So, two for two trade going down over here on this side. But uh, new meta is boxed out on the right a little bit. They're going to have to fight to get to the zone here. Tri strikes are popped to try and prevent them from doing it just long enough to get lead at least. And, oh man, getting walled out. The flanks are going to be so hard on this map because it is not easy to push against such an easy flank to stop. Um, you just have to like sit in and like watch both mid and right at the same time and sit and watch mid and left at the same time and all of that you just see everything. is devastating. That just damaged and killed and followed out everybody. A new meta setup, but they didn't have to use very many specials. Like they're decently close to the whale, they're decently close to the inkjet for whatever that might be worth. Uh, that's kind of the one problem though with inkjet and reef slider. You have two specials that are gonna work really hard to get any form of value. And the Zuka is gonna be able to immediately get a pick. And Seafoam's pushing in, and a lot of new metas move to the sides. They have to regroup a little bit, and that Wavebreaker is going to be in a really good spot as Barry gets set up here to try to take the zone. Yeah, I think it's going to fall to whether they're able to use that Kraken effectively to get their frontliners in. Because their frontliners could easily get walled out really hard here if they don't find the right angles and if they don't get the enemy team distracted enough. Right now, seems to be working out okay for new meta. They're getting set up, and they're really close to being able to reclaim the lead here. But still, plenty of Splatoon left to be played here. And here come the Tri Strikes. Ooh, an early kill on the B Slosher is going to be really bad for them. The Slider is going to come in and just, you know, escape car to the corner of the map. Just blow up somewhere where you won't get punished for it. And just, you know, draw their attention a little bit. Here comes the Kraken. And that's just going to get kills. And they're just going to paint the zone while the Kraken goes off. And there you go. We, we do the same thing with Last Resort. Same exact strat. Just sit behind the zone. Let the Kraken go in as everyone drops in. And it's so devastating when it's able to work out properly. And especially with new meta with a similar kind of aggressive comp. And the brush is just going to be able to run in and the Tetra's going to run in. But the brush does get picked here. And the Tetra gets picked. And the Tri Strikes are on the zone. They might be able to flip it back in time. I think new meta got a little bit too greedy. Didn't need to go that far in and could have just played to hold zone with a little amount of points. But now Seafoam has a chance. Here comes a Kraken, immediately going to shut him down, knowing they don't need the charge attack. The bucket's not fast enough to get out of the way when it commits to that attack. And the Kraken going to dip off the side of the map to hold for a little bit longer. Yeah, a little bit of a, a mistake there on the hold. Just frontline weapons, you know, sometimes you just go in oh my God, because he bumped you're him. like, we have to... We got the bump kill. I'm death. sorry. We oh, have to play no. it out. The brush just ran oh, no. over. And the brush is continuing to run around in the base there. They have no idea where that thing is. And it's causing a lot of mayhem right now. But they're having to back up because the tri-strikes are going to be able to come in. Two oh down. God. Can the Tetris hold? That I shred don't think so. really, really good. But unfortunately, they're still going to lose map. But like, at the very least, get rid of a tri-strike resource. Oh, we got hit by the tri-strike but got out. The touch of death special is not touch of death there. You are able to take just a tiny bit of it. Two hits out of three. Are we going to see a Zuka pop to snipe the ancient? I think no. I think they just waited out. You don't need it yet. Really good patience. Very tempting to use it. Okay, now we're going to pop it on the Kraken. But it might still snipe the ball point. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kraken in the zone, but Mad is going to ju juke it out. So we don't have a Zuka for this fight, but it's still in their favor. They still are able to push in. Here comes a slider to immediately just place the charger. I'm pretty sure Barry dropped. No, he backed all the way up. Someone else got pushed off. Ball point able to get a nice set of picks. Gets the ink jet to secure the stagger kill. Definitely worth it for that special. And manages to put a bit more pressure on the charger before recalling. However, they're two down though. With the Waybreaker out, it could be a very easy push back the other way. Gonna locate the Tetra. And the Tetra's gonna be stuck just trying to get out with their life, but not able to get quite far enough. Luke is trying to shark him, but very, very aware of it. Just painting over him there, exposing that player and they're able to get a nice hold here. The zone doesn't have a lot of time left. The Kraken is just targeting this bucket over and over again, but it runs out. Madness is able to get a kill, but I don't think they can paint it in time. And new meta is able to take it one to zero.
Yeah, I don't think they recognized quite at the end that the win condition there was not time, it was points. They were ticking down pretty quick there. They only really had one opportunity to make it work, so well played there from new meta. Um, really liking the way that they're being able to find angles to use that inkjet from on the ball point. The Kraken is getting a lot of value here. I think really strong on that map there just because there's so little space to juke it. You have pretty narrow corridors you have to deal with there. And so when it gets on top of you, it's a little bit more difficult to dodge than it would be in other places. Um, we saw Madness having to pull some absolute, pull an absolute rabbit out of his hat to get out of it on zone earlier. Um, so really strong use of the special there to get their frontliners in and be able to set up just a slightly better hold than Seafoam was able to get. Yeah, and overall, really good job. Like, the Kraken was definitely an MVP there, and so that kind of map is where Kraken can be really valuable. There's a very limited space to stand in, and the other team can very easily shoot and paint over a lot of that area while painting the zone, and so there's less spots to hide from the Kraken. And even then, if you're waiting out the Kraken and just dodging and not painting the zone, the other team's going to walk in, and the counter's going to go down, and it's going to be guaranteed points. And that, that's really part of what Kraken's good at. It's good at just stalling and guaranteeing objective time while you have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And I like that they're managing to use it for objective play, but also using it to get something done on the front line as well. Because the big counterplay to Kraken here is just that you've got this tiny, tiny little hitbox on the Kraken, right? It was a 96 gal that could hit literally like half the width of the map the entire time that it was a 96 gal. And now it's the size of a burst bomb with its hitbox. So there are holes now that need to be plugged in your front line once you pop the Kraken. But if the Kraken is moving forward and shepherding people into its teammates, now you've got a situation where it it's still having an impact on these fights. It's not just there flopping around on the tower or something and leaving its team in a 3v4. It's being a factor in those fights, and that's the way that I think the, the Kraken gameplay is going to have to develop uh, past just the, the, the gimmick strats that we've seen on Twitter. <laughs> the gimmick strats. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, the gimmicks like push and tower and stuff are nice, but that's not the main thing you do. Like, that's a factor of the special. Mm -hmm. It's something you can take advantage of. But, you know, that's not your primary use. That's your last-ditch thing a lot of the time. Some exceptions, of course, but... It's always important mm -hmm. to know, like, the other ways to play around the Kraken and get more value than just cheesing the objective. Right. Which is ironic, because cheesing the objective is what everyone complains about. But, All right, we're moving back on to, to this we're, match. We're back to normal seeds <laughs> somewhat. It's only one crab and not four of them, so, you know, don't mind it this time. But there we go. Back to the vanilla splash. Very strong crab map, obviously. A good pick for them. New meta going to be switching over to the heavy splatling. Oh, that Zooka is in the corner having to dodge a Kraken, but very nice play. Just got rid of the Zooka immediately, and the Kraken's going to have to try and go find another target, but unfortunately, not far enough to find a pick. But luckily, while the shot was running for the Kraken, it got put in a pretty weak spot. And now this gal that has chased the heavy can set up on a wall and control the space. That is what's so good about this 96 kit. It's the same thing in Splatoon 1. You Kraken, you force space, and then when you get that space, you walk up, set up a wall, and hold it, and your team walks in and really solidifies it. Yeah, that was really well done to have it right at their back as soon as the transformation happened so that they were safe the whole way through it. But uh, some players going down, so new meta going to have to reset at least a little bit, but they get another pick. Oh, they get two. That's a good opportunity for them three down. They're going to have to get some clams, and they, there may be a defense in place by the time they get up the ramp here, but they are definitely going to open the basket at least, and we'll see how much they can get from it. Oh, here's something really dangerous. Yeah, it can go up here. I don't think it has a uh, special power. No, it does have a bit of special power, which helps because it is still pretty far, but like nothing can really get up there and directly contest the players. Kraken can. They're very dangerous in that situation. Still though, not a lot of points being scored there. Optimal play if the Kraken's going behind you, you just got to push the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they did succeed in doing that to some degree. Either that or it was also possible New Meta was just struggling with getting the clams to the right place because they had to put that push together pretty quickly. Didn't have a lot of clams to do it with. Yeah, we do see the brush on the right here trying to hold, but they're eventually just slowly getting pushed out. And Seafoam has the first set of tri strikes to try to gain momentum here. And they're slowly pushing on this right side of the map, grabbing a lot of clams, setting up a little bit, and just trying to walk in slowly but surely to take space. Gets a pick onto Isabel, and that's really good for them. The Heavy has a Wave Breaker ready, going to be using it in the corner. 
and just kind of painting, trying to secure map control, marking people for the crack to go target, and nice pokes on the top mid. Just really back and forth so far, but just trying to stall for a little bit. I'm a bit worried that Nubet is not taking the space they need, though. I really want to see one of these aggressive weapons make a play, or the 96 can just do it. You know, the 96 yeah. can also just walk up to a heavy. You know, it can shoot things. Yeah, it, yeah. it did. And now we're going to have a Kraken, we're going to have a Reef Slider, we're going to have a Killer Whale. Like, we're going to have every special in the game, actually. Uh, like, this is just going to be a devastating push if they can get these specials off in time. Here we go. Kraken used a little far away. Looking for a Sharker. Finds one there. Going in with the Kraken. Going to retarget for the Heavy. Opt to go back and try to get this guy. Helps out with it. Only the Heavy smiling alive. This is going to be really scary for them. There's not a pity to super jump in, so it's not a game-ending threat immediately. But there's a lot of clans to recall, a lot of people here. And the Heavy goes down. There's no Wave Breaker. That's the only thing that we're close to. The Slider's going in, and as long as New Meta can recall clans, they should be okay. The Tetra's not even trying to fight. They just want to get to the basket, and they get the KO. New Meta getting into the loser's finals to fight Crush Soda. And Seafoam going out at a very respectable and high-placing fourth. Good job to them as well. Yeah, I'm really excited to see these kinds of aggressive plays working out. Um, I, like, great execution there on the start of that push from New Meta, where they had the Kraken going around the right side of the pillow there to flush anybody out who might be lingering in that corner. And that forces them into a straight line of sight with the rest of the team. So that entire basket area gets cleared because of it. 